so how did you get into this role? Uh, so the psychology role at the club has been something that myself and Dan Bolas have been in discussions with over a, well, a reasonable length of time. We felt that it's something we would like to have added to the programme. It's something from a personal perspective that I've been looking to do for quite a number of years, probably over the last seven or eight years. So something I've been working towards, studying towards, and it's uh, at a point now where we're able to, uh, from the club's perspective, we're able to uh, accommodate it and something that I'm at a position in terms of qualification and experience where hopefully um, I can I can add it to the programme from my perspective too. So what, what qualifications did you undergo to come into this role? Um, so I did an undergrad which wasn't psych, uh, psychologically accredited so, uh, but it allowed me to go on to a, a master's degree in sports psychology anyway. I then had to do a conversion course which allowed me to um, access something got an accredited pathway called the BASIS SEPA, which is a British Association Sport and Exercise Sciences. So it's a psychology route with, with that body. And, and you were already working at the academy um, in, in a different role, weren't you? Yeah, um, up until up till this point I've been at the academy for 10 years across a part-time capacity and within the last three or four years a full-time capacity and that's been, as you say, in exclusively a coaching role. Um, across foundation phase and youth development phase, so up from under nines up to most recently under 14, so spanned across quite a few age groups over, over that 10 year period. Uh, have you enjoyed your time at the academy? Loved it, I wouldn't have been here otherwise uh, for 10 years if I, if I didn't enjoy it, um, I didn't love it. I've, it. There's lots of challenge, there's lots of, um, lots of things that do challenge me as a coach and do, do have stretched me over, over the time, but then there's been so many moments and it might just be little little moments from seeing individuals perform and, and develop um, as well as times where your team has won a good game and that they've performed well yeah, there's lots of um, lots of those little moments which you can take away and think oh, do you know what that was that was a really enjoyable moment in my time and as, as you move into this psychology role you know why, why is that so important in football but especially in academy football I think it's important in football, but no more, no less important than other areas such as the, the technical side, coaching, the tactical side. It's just probably a, a side of the game that has been a little bit underused. Um, so there's, there's definitely a space for it. Um, I know the first team have um, some psychological support um, across, across the country. There'll be other clubs that do so as well. So it's an area that is starting to pick up. The importance of it really, um, the importance of it is really the players may may or may not perform well and it might be through a, a technical issue, it might be through a, a bit of tactical understanding, but it can easily also be the way they might be feeling on the day or, or a, a build-up of feelings that they've had that lead to sort of negative performances that might impact, impact them technically. But equally, if you flip that around and you get someone in a, a good space and they're feeling good, um, it can also help their performances too. So I'd say that's why it's important. Mm -hmm. Is it something that you'd say has been sort of overlooked? You know, not not just here, but in football on a wider basis. Uh, yeah, I th in short, yes. However, in more recent times, it's starting to pick up a little bit more traction, and and for the right reasons, is that an unhappy player, an unhappy human, will make a, an unhappy player, and that's going to be counterproductive. Equally, someone who's a little bit more happy and more content and more motivated to train and play, you, you're most likely, it's no guarantee, but most likely to get a, get a better performance from them. So it's win-win, it's win-win for the individual who goes away feeling, feeling in a good, a good frame of mind, um, but then for a manager or a coach or whoever it might be, they're getting uh, real, good, real good output from the, the player on the pitch too. So the two go hand in hand, the performance and the wellbeing side for sure. And how do you see this, this role developing going forward? Um, I hope that I can get around all age groups, well, let's rephrase that, I will be getting around all age groups. I've got an opportunity where I will be working predominantly with some, young, some of the younger boys now, um, as well as working with during the daytime with our, our youth team. So the initial sort, of, initial sort of steps have been taken with that, where we've done some workshops with the 18s, thrown out some scenarios, and it's been a case of developing a shared understanding amongst the group. So it's so kind of like creating some healthy conflict. So we've had some workshops where we've been discussing performances and 
they've been the boys have been going um, in, in a constructive manner, uh, been critiquing certain things, and it's helped to again create that sort of shared language that actually we're, we're in here, we're, nothing's ever personal. We're here to drive ourselves to be better at what we do. Equally, it's putting those little steps in with those younger age groups. So again, having sort of healthy conflict around um, driving performances, uh, feeling, uh, developing those reflective skills to reflect on performances, what, what went well, what could be better, and then not only having those conversa conversations internally with themselves, but actually it, football is a team game. I know we talk about academies as developing, developing uh, the individuals along the pathway, but we are developing for a, a team environment, whether that's here or elsewhere. Uh, it might be even outside of sport in businesses where they've got to come together and work as part of the team. So being able to have those healthy discussions with, with others is really important. So that's where ideally sort of my highest aim is to develop that with the players, get those kind of robust communication skills where they can work with one and each other in a, in a really healthy manner.